Well, here's an interesting one. Um, I was thinking of recording something about this and then I decided not to because actually I don't know why I decided not to and then afterwards I was reflecting on it and I thought actually it would make a good example to post into my series so here we go um, I was asked to take part in a, uh, a fireside chat uh, an EMA online fireside chat I'm a board member at EMA which is the European Electronic Messaging Association which is you know the name has comes from ages past uh, but what it really is now is a is a pan-European um, organization member organization which looks at the identity space really anyway they're they're nice people <laughs> uh, and so I said that I would so the fireside chat that was set up was with two people who I know very well and uh, I hope I won't embarrass them by saying I greatly respect both of them as well so for me it was an opportunity to have a a pleasant conversation with some people who I like and respect very much um, for those of you who don't know John Eric has been extremely influential in in the mobile digital signature space and Kim Cameron was the architect of the of the original rules of identity many many years ago which clarified a, a complex topic and certainly helped my thinking to evolve in that space so anyway so apart from anything else it'll be fun so I drew up a thing before it thinking um, okay so what are my goals for this um, and I thought uh, okay so the focus is going to be on distributed identity which is an interesting topic and a topic that you know my opinions on this are not completely fully formed so so that makes it especially interesting so what were my sort of specific goals for the event first of all to do a good job as an EMA board member of course um, secondly to learn something I genuinely want to learn something about this area of course I want to say something interesting that people will remember I mean you know let's not let's not pretend otherwise of course I want people to to remember what I say um, and I wanted to gather opinions for my next book because the book I'm working on at the moment will robots need passports is about future digital identity and I know that you know self-sovereign distributed decentralized identity is going to be part of that and I'm going to have to deal with it in the book so I need I need more opinions about that to help me sort of formulate my opinions okay so uh, given that there's going to be three people talking uh, I'm going to get about fifth, 10 to 15 minutes to talk um, probably 10 minutes and then discussion with other people afterwards so for my agenda I needed to come up with sort of three key points that work with the webinar agenda but um, you know get me get me some of the things I want so so I decided first of all um, I'm going to make a point about being um, specific about what distributed entity actually means otherwise these conversations can tend to kind of wander and then I won't I won't really learn anything and I, I hate to be an annoying pedant on these kind of things but it does bother me when you have a discussion and people are sort of talking across purposes so I want to be very specific about what we're talking about I thought given that you know we're having the webinar because of the because of the uh, COVID crisis and we're all online um, I thought it would be interesting to talk about whether these new forms of identity would make a difference or would have made a difference during the crisis would it have helped or not and finally to answer the third question which is about what's the route to the new paradigm if if the new paradigm is you know well i need i need to understand what they mean by distributed identity but i think the conversation is going to be about some form of decentralized i.e self-sovereign identity in which case i i don't see a route to that um but open for discussion okay so then before the talk I thought okay so as I always think about well as, as I think about these kind of things what's my framework it's a talk I'm not going to be using slides but nonetheless you know I want something in front of me so that I can 
you know, I can stay focused and make my points. I, I tend not to use handwritten notes or, or, or flashcards or things, um, but I do like to have picture in certain circumstances. So what I thought I'd do for this is I'd do three pictures. So, so the first picture is just to sort of clarify, are we talking about self-sovereign identity? And if so, what does that actually mean? And so here's a diagram actually taken from a draft of the new book um, which establishes these three categories of identity um, self-sovereign, sovereign and trans-sovereign which overlaps with what used to be called federated identity but if we're going to use the self-sovereign label then I'll use sovereign and trans-sovereign so it's clear what we're talking about. So why do I want to keep that picture in front of me? But I only printed them out. Uh, I, I only printed out these three pictures. I didn't print out the rest of the slides. Why do I want those three pictures in front of me? Well, in this particular case, one of the reasons why I'm not sure about self-sovereign identity is because I'm not convinced that people actually want to manage their own digital identities. Um, and if it's going to be done by somebody else, then it should probably be done by regulated institutions. And obviously, you know, one of my hobby horses is one category of those institutions is going to be banks. So the point about that picture is just to be clear, are we talking about self-sovereign or something different? Um, my second picture is this, which is about the use of it, whether in crisis times or otherwise. And the point about this picture, which uses the, the three domain identity model, which you're I'm no doubt bored of seeing, but, but also is a central part of the new book. Uh, interactions are between personas. Personas store credentials. Credentials are attributes which are, you know, signed by some party that the the relying party actually trusts for these kind of things. So, an attribute would be is over eighteen. The credential would be is over eighteen signed by, I don't know, the driving license agency or the pub or something. You know, because pubs would trust their own signatures. But the point is, those things are related to the public key, not the private key. You know, the private key never leaves wherever the private key is. So if those personas are to take an example, X509 certificates, then the, um, the certificate contains the public key. And when I present the certificate, I have to demonstrate control over the corresponding private key. So in practice, I go to the pub, you know, they scan my phone, my phone says I have this credential, they force a cryptographic, I mean the customer never sees any of this. A cryptographic, cryptographic challenge is forced by encoding something using that public key. In order to decode it I have to use the private key and that means I have to whatever, put in a pin, put my thumb on it or something you know, to demonstrate I've got control over that private key. The point about using this model is it forces attention to the to the attribute use, the credentials and proofs and all that sort of stuff, because it doesn't matter where the corresponding private key is. So, you know, I, I present a certificate to the pub and the pub forces a cryptographic challenge, which can only be decoded using the private key, but it doesn't matter where that private key is. It doesn't matter if it's on my phone if it's in the bank, if it's on a space station somewhere, it doesn't matter as long as I can, as long as I can use it. And whoever's storing it, you know, my phone or the space station or whatever, would want to authenticate me. So the whole thing works. So the point is, arguments about sovereign, self-sovereign, trans-sovereign to one side, it actually doesn't matter when you want to present the credential to get something done. So that suggests to me the third picture, and then I thought, well, okay, if so, if I'm going to try and make that point, I should try and make a sort of constructive point about where we could do something about this. And so I thought I'd focus on the W3C verifiable credentials work. The place that you know the standardization of the personas. Suppose we decided to use X509 certificates, is one thing, but the standardization of the attributes, how they get turned into credentials, how the credentials get used. That's that's a weak link at the moment. There's nothing there right now. It doesn't matter for the sovereign examples because they define it all themselves. So I thought I'd make a point about um, W3C for credentials. And in the discussion, 
Um, actually, this this opened up an interesting part of the discussion, and um, um, Kim made some interesting points about moving towards you know the proofs based version of this, where where what's presented isn't the persona, but well, it it, it is, but you're not presenting the credential; you're presenting a proof of the credential, and and this is really interesting. You know, I'd go so far as to say leading edge thinking. Um, but I wanted to make a couple of other, I wouldn't say fishing, but I wanted to make a couple of other points about credentials that I was just interested to see the response to it, both in the, both from the panelists, but also in the question and answer session, which actually was quite vigorous. So, you know, you could see the questions coming in as the conversation was going on, and there were a lot of them. So here are kind of three areas I thought I'd touch on. I've been having some conversations with colleagues recently about I'd got very interested in the new interoperability standards around mobile driving license and I thought you know much like X400 disappeared but X509 remained as the certificate format I wonder if the mobile driving license interoperability standard could end up being useful as a, as a way of carrying um, credentials around even if it's not used for driving licenses um, Unfortunately, I missed it, but my consult Hyperion colleague Justin Gage uh, had a had a seminar about this. I need to go and listen to the recording of it because um, I thought because I think this is an interesting area to focus on. Um, I also thought, what about if we try instead of trying to boil the ocean? What if we try to come up with attribute dictionaries which are very very specific to a sector? You know, like I don't know virus credential management or something maybe that would be a way of getting things off the ground and I thought I'd also in case people started talking about blockchain and because I don't want to get into an argument about whether something's a blockchain or not or what's in the blocks or all that sort of thing I you know just open up a discussion you know might this be a place to store the the personas the credentials the proofs not the identities themselves but but anyway interesting point so um what would my key points be? I'm not actually sure about that because it, it is an example where I don't know what the answer is and I want to hear what the other panellists have got to say. So, Anyway, what were the results of all of this? Uh, actually, the discussion around separating the location of the private key from the use of credentials, that went very well. I'm definitely going to expand on that and use it in my book. I might do a blog post uh, that comes out of it, again, just to sort of test and reinforce that. Um, but actually, I think I want to talk to Kim again first, because um, just to just to bounce around a few my few more ideas about the proof stuff, and I, I want to be clear in my head what he what he was talking about with with the proofs. Um, there were a couple of things that came up to make me think about this path into the marketplace idea. Um, you know, there, there are some discussions about EI DAS and other things there which I need to reflect on. I'm not sure if I heard a conclusion there. But the thing I did notice, and obviously I'm shameless with this sort of thing, the thing I did notice was that the feedback that the event got was superb. I think they had about 160, 170 people, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but the questions coming through the question session were really good. The LinkedIn messages and emails and WhatsApp I got afterwards were were very positive. People really liked it. So that means to me anyway that when it comes to the EMA annual conference, which is now going to be virtual next month, uh, this should be a much bigger section of it. So I'm going to go back to, to Roger and Lorraine and the others and um, and also talk to Kim and uh, John Eric and see about having a, a you know a much a, a longer and more detailed session about distributed identity for the June conference to see if a, you know a model at least a mental model of distributed identity might come out of that which will look like the sort of trans sovereign model earlier on with uh, three DID context and verifiable credentials feeding into proofs, possibly. So, a bit technical, but but you know, if I could get that onto a piece of paper, that would be that would be a really useful outcome. Anyway, I, I hope it was useful. 
please please keep sending me the feedback because I do pay attention to it all good and bad and I genuinely do want to get better at this stuff and actually you know feel that I'm being helpful as well so so keep the feedback coming thanks guys